Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a vibrant hover team page for your next Divi project. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. Next, you want to give your page a name. So I'm just going to call this vibrant hover team page. Click on use Divi Builder. Now for this design, I'm gonna build everything from scratch. So I'm gonna click here on build from scratch. And then I'm gonna add a single column. And in that column, we're going to add a text module. And for the text module here, we're just going to call this meet the team. I'm gonna save that. We are going to come back and style this. So the next stage is to add a divider. So since this add module is in my way, I'm gonna come over here click on my expand settings and then i'm just going to add my divider this way so i'm going to search for it and select it great so now that i have all my elements in place i just need to go back to my text here and we are going to set this text as a heading so this is going to be heading one but uh, in order for us to see our design we need to switch over here to the desktop view so i'm going to highlight my text and set this to heading one now it's time to stylize this heading text. So I'm going to come over here to design, heading text. Make sure you're selecting heading one tab. Right, so my heading font here is not going to be default. So we're going to set this to Poppins. So I'm going to search for it. And this is a free font, by the way. So go ahead and search for it and use it. Next, I'm going to come over here to my font weight, set this to light. Next, I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to set this to black. So I'm going to click here on the icon and just drag this all the way down to black. Right, so the next stage now is to set my heading size and this is going to be 6VW. And I also need to reduce the spacing between these letters. So for letter spacing, I'm going to set this to a negative 0.4. So we're done here. I'm going to save and then the next stage is to style the divider. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design, line. So the first thing I'm going to do is to change my color here to black. Click on sizing and for my weight, I'm going to set this to 12 pixels and then the width is going to be 14%. Now, as you can see, this is all the way to the left. Ideally, we need this centered. So I'm going to click here on the center icon. So now all is centered. So I'm going to save for now. And then the next stage is I'm going to create the uh, bios using the regular section and three columns. So I'm going to come over here. Click this plus button, add a regular section, and we're going to have three columns. Now, before we add any content, I need to adjust the uh, row sizing settings. So I'm going to click here on my row settings, design, and I'm going to go to my gutter width, select yes. And my gutter width here is just my space between the columns. So I'm going to reduce this all the way to one so that we don't have any spaces. Next, I'm going to come over here to my width and set this to 100% and my maximum width to 100% as well. Right, so the next stage is to adjust my row spacing settings. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and I'm gonna add a top padding of 2VW and I'm gonna do the same to the bottom. So now that I've added my padding to my top and bottom, I'm gonna save this and then over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add an image and a blurb module to column one. So I'm gonna search for my image so this is the image that is for our testimonial. So I'm going to select my image here, upload an image. So we might as well style this since we've uh, opened this up. So we're going to come over here to the design tab, alignment, and make sure it's centered. Now let's come over here to our sizing and set our width to 30%. Next, I'm going to come over here to spacing and set my margins to minus 3VW. Now, as you can see, this is a square, but we want our design here to have a circle on our testimonial image. So I'm gonna come over here to my border and I am going to set this to 20 VW. So this will allow us to have a circle, as you can see here. Now let's go to our borders. So I'm gonna set my border width to 12 and also my color to white. Now for the border style, Currently, it's set to solid. I'm going to change this to double. Right, so the next stage is to come over here to our box shadow. I'm going to go with uh, this first option. And I'm going to set my blur strength to 50. 
And then finally, I'm gonna come over here on the advanced tab. So what we need to do here is to set our Z index. So I'm gonna click here on visibility. And for my Z index, I'm gonna set this to three. Now, what this allows us to do is to stack it above anything that's gonna be below it. So this is why we're setting this to three. So now I'm gonna save this. And then the next stage is to add our blurb. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and uh, choose my blurb module. And we now need to style it. So here on the title, we can give this uh, name. So let's call this lady Jane Doe. And for our description here, uh, we can trim this down a little bit. It doesn't have to be, you know, that much. And of course, in your case, this has to be real text. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to use some CSS to style this. So I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab and I'm going to go to my CSS classes and IDs. So here we're going to add a CSS class called blurb icon. So now we're going to come back over here to our content and click on image and icon. And we're going to choose an icon for this. So the icon I'm going to go with is just a plus. So I'm just going to scroll down here and add my plus button or my plus icon rather. So next we're going to come over here to the background and add our background color. And over here, we're just going to set this color here to white. And then we're also going to add a hover gradient. So I'm going to click here on this arrow, click on this uh, icon on the hover icon and add my gradient colors. So I'm gonna click this plus button here and add my first color. Now, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So that's gonna be my first color. And now I'm gonna add my second color. So I'm gonna click here and add my second color that so here my gradient type needs to be set to linear and then my gradient direction is going to be 154. My start position is going to be zero and then my end position is going to be 46%. Now let's head over to the icon. So I'm gonna come over here to design, image and icon and I'm gonna add my icon color. So my default color here is going to be this color right here, I'm gonna paste it. And my hover color is going to be transparent. So I'm gonna click on this arrow click on the hover tab and set this to transparent. In fact, let me make sure that this is fully transparent like that. Now let's uh, add the size to our icon. So I'm gonna come over here to use icon font size. Now this is the option you need to change the size of your icon. So I'm gonna set this to 2VW. Next, I'm going to uh, make sure that my text here is aligned because as you can see, everything's aligned left and this doesn't look good. So I'm gonna come over here to text and align everything to the center. Now let's style the heading. So I'm gonna come over here to my title text. Or well, the other quickest way you could do this is just to click here and right now, as you can see, heading four is selected. We're gonna change this from default to poppins, change our style to bold. And we are also going to change our title text color to white and the size to 1.5 VW. Now it's time to style the body text. So I'm just gonna scroll down here, select my body text, and um, our color here is going to be white. Our size is going to be 0.8 VW. And we also need to add our line height, which is going to be 2 VW. Now we're going to change the sizing settings. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna start with my content width. So I'm gonna set this to 100%. And the width here is going to be 81%. It's centered as well. Now it's time to add our spacing values. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and for the desktop, I'm gonna set this to minus four. The bottom is going to be 3.5. Now let's head over to the padding and we're gonna set this to 7.1. Now for the padding, 7.1 is going to be both for the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna activate this chain. And then over here for my left padding, I'm gonna set this to 2VW. And this is also going to be the same for the right. Now it's time to add a border. So I'm gonna come over here to border and um, we're going to make it rounded all sides. So I'm gonna set this to 50VW. The next stage is to add our border style. So I'm gonna come over here click on box shadow. And the one I'm gonna go with is this one right here. So I'm gonna select it. Now let's add our values. So my first value here is for the box shadow horizontal position. So here we're gonna set it at zero VW. So the next stage is to add my box shadow vertical position, but this time I'm gonna add my value here on hover. So I'm gonna set this to minus 14 VW. Next, I'm gonna to go to my spread strength. I'm gonna set this to minus six VW. And then I'm gonna add my box shadow color. So I'm gonna come over here and paste the values between the brackets. 
Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So now that we've added all the styles that we need to all our modules, it's time now to style column one. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to come over here to my row settings and go into column one settings. So I'm going to start here with my gradient style. So I'm going to click here on background, click on the second tab for my gradient and then click this plus button. So I'm going to start by adding my first color and then I'm going to add my second color. I'm just going to paste it in here. And then we want to make sure that our gradient type is set to linear and then the gradient direction is 282 degrees. So I'm going to set it here. Next, we're going to come over here to the design, click on border. And again, we want to set our, our circle design. So I'm going to set this to 50 VW. Now the next stage is to come to the advanced tab, click on visibility. And on vertical overflow, I'm going to click on visible. So I'm going to come over here set this to visible and I'm going to do the same for horizontal, set this to visible. So now you can see that everything is above this image. So as you can see, we've spent time to design this first column. So everything looks great. So I'm going to save this. And then what we're going to do now is to delete these two columns, which have nothing in them. And then we're going to just duplicate this twice. And then we can always go in and change all our settings here. But before we do that, I have some CSS code because remember, there's a stage that we added a CSS class. So now it's time to add the um, CSS code to the actual page in order for that class to work. Now, this CSS code is can also be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So for now, I'm just going to save this and publish this page. And then I'm going to come over here to my page settings, click on advanced, custom CSS, and paste my CSS code in here. So this CSS code only applies to this page. It doesn't apply to any other page on your website. So I'm going to save this. So all you have to do now, now that we have all this set, is to go into the columns and just change the colors just to differentiate them. So I'm going to do one example and then you can go ahead and do the rest. So I'm going to come over here to my background, click here on my first color and paste my color in here. And then I'm also going to add my second color. So I'm going to add my second color here and then save. Next, we're going to change our image here. So I'm gonna to come to my image module, click on this area here, change this image, upload an image. And what you may also need to do is to come into the content area here and also change the content. So let's say this is uh, Samantha, save this as well. Now let's save this page and take a quick look at our design. So I'm gonna save the page, exit the visual builder, and pretty much this is our final design. So as you can see, when I mouse over here, all the information is now showing, but it's important that you go in and add all the names and change the colors of the backgrounds as well. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.